all types of things in the real world. I've never been through nothing like this in my life. Living out of a suitcase. I slept with my hoodie and my jacket on, you know. Shit just turns, it gets wicked. Got the black eye, we got the stitches. Unregistered firearms on tour. Your stock is ripping and heels breaking. It was so bad. And the locals want to beat you the fuck up. That's the world we travel. I mean, I've never been on a smooth road anywhere. Life on the road is a major part of being in the music industry. But still, when you're out there, it's not fun and fucking games. Being out on tour, being rich and famous and, and rapping and singing, it's, it's, it's hard work. A lot of people think that tour is glamorous and stuff. It's not, it ain't all that, you know. It's work. It's, you know what you're doing. You're building your brand. At the end of the day, that's what, it, that's what it's all about. You have to book your own shows. You have to book your own flights, book your own hotel. I spent all my money. The schedule is fucking crazy. Touring is fun, though, it's, but you will literally burn yourself out. <laughs> you know, you could stay in every night and sleep. It's just that you probably aren't gonna. You probably are gonna hang out with random girls and fucking stay out and do drugs and get crazy until 4 o'clock in the morning, and then they're gonna wake you up at 8 o'clock in the morning to drive to the next venue, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Tap, tap, tap. It's time to go. We go to the next city. Whether you gotta get up at 6, 7 in the morning, catch a flight, or if you're on tour with buses, you gotta get up and the bus gotta leave. Sometimes the bus leaves in the middle of the night, the night before, early in the morning. You travel all the day. As soon as you get off that fucking bus, need to go to the race station. Need to go to the sound check. Need you to do an interview. Need you to go stop and get some food. You gotta hurry and get ready for the show. You gotta do this. You gotta go. I'm like, what the fuck? I was with Mary J. Blige from 94 to 96. So we probably did three, four tours in that time. Two of them being a Mary J. Blige tour and Friends. And then we were part of the Boys the Men tour. Super exhausting. Super exhausting, super grueling. We had dancers, background singers, a band. You know, stockings ripping and heels breaking in the middle of a show. And, and the drummer, eight sticks break. And so he's playing with his pinky and shit. And we we're trying to get that done. It's, all types of things happen on the road that you just can't anticipate. It's, it's, it's grueling. It's grueling. And that's all because you want to live this dream. Some of the hardest shit that goes with that is just trying to get some rest. You can't do a show five nights a week, and then after every show, you go to an after party and tell jokes and you know, yell over the speakers and stuff. One, two days, you throw your whole voice out. Now you're on a tour with no voice. You can't get your voice back in a day. Once it goes, it's go How many artists have you seen on stage that was hoarse? I've seen the best of the best do it. I, it happened to me. I lost my voice mid-tour. It was so, so bad. I ended up getting bronchitis. So I was cough. I had the worst cough. I never been through nothing like this in my life. All the getting up early, not getting to sleep, living out of a suitcase, wearing the same clothes over and over. Like, I probably wore these jeans, like, for, like, 20 of these 36 shows. Like, I stopped caring because it doesn't even matter, you know what I mean? Yeah, we ain't had no good hotel. I had walked in the room. They had cigarette holes in the blankets and stuff. I slept with my hoodie and my jacket on, you know? Shoes, socks on. It ain't all that, you know? You gotta do what you do, though. You gotta make do with it. And you gotta remember your goal. Whatever can go wrong will. Even that to me sometimes is exciting. Like, oh, the tour bus break down, and you gotta do this, and like whatever can happen, you know. So I think I like the the surprising things of dog. Certain people on the tour, I'm not gonna say that they were necessarily associated with Pump and Perp, brought um, unregistered firearms on tour. Um, I, I'm gonna be totally honest, Lil Pump robbed some guy for like 150 Xanax right before we went on tour. So there was a lot of wild stuff happening on that tour. And a lot of people were like, oh, I can't believe you would bring those guys on tour knowing how much drugs they do. And I'm like, I didn't know. Like, I, I, I thought they might have been hyping it up a little bit for the songs and stuff. And in reality, it was like about a million times worse, which is really worse on, but I mean, we're friends, so I gotta, I'm, I'm along for the ride. You can get out on the road and shit just turns. It gets wicked. People can get into some shit with the locals and you fucking somewhere in some city and the locals want to beat you the fuck up because some shit you said or did. Like, all kind of shit happens. That shit is real fucking life. Real life. I got robbed in Miami. 
there was a certain level of in invincibility that I was feeling based on the fact that I'm walking around with thousands and thousands of dollars in my pocket from getting paid from doing a show. I got on at least fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of jewelry. I'm with guys way into the six figure mark when it comes to what we got in our pockets and what we're wearing and what we're driving. So I decided I'm invincible at this point. So I decided to get on my little moped and drive around to an area by myself and I got robbed. Look, niggas caught me out there. We gotta get these niggas back. All right, they got the black eye, we got these stitches. This shit is crazy. Got caught sleeping. If you see them niggas, I need my shit back, man. It's a lot of money. I knew better than go around by myself. But at the time, I was probably drinking a little bit, probably smoking a little bit, and just wasn't in my clear mind. But that's the that's the road we travel. I mean, I've never been on a smooth road anywhere. When you get home, you can't wait to get back out on the road, which is crazy. But yeah, tour tour definitely changed my life for for the better because it, it, it taught me what this game is really about, and it's about the fans, and it's about actually going out and touching them. You know what I'm saying? So it's amazing. I fell off the tour bus. I was drunk, like one of my one of my like third shows in Atlanta. I'm like probably the first time I've ever been in Atlanta. I was so excited to be in Atlanta because I just knew it was like strip clubs. And I went to a strip club about 20 years old, and I was drinking Hennessy, drinking shots, and then you chase it down with a fucking Heineken. The stupidest shit ever, but the greatest thing. Um, yeah, I fell off the tour bus. I was so fucking drunk talking shit like yeah, 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 doop, 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 doop. and that's all I remember. Man, tour was great. Tour was great. Yeah. The road experience, you know, you're dealing with the negative, but the positive far outweighed it. So that's why for those that can endure, it's worth it. The money, obviously, the fame, the, the, the progress, the, the, the moving up the ladder in fulfilling your dream. Oh, man, the access to women, to the drugs, to the clothes, to the cars, to the private jets. That shit was scolding hot, like lava. You know what I mean? Shit was crazy. Being on the road is fun. It's some of the best things you'll ever like experience in your life. We you always hear artists like, man, I'm about to go on tour, man, I'm about to go on tour, man, I'm on tour. There are definitely male groupies. Going to a chick's house, a strange chick that I just met to have sex. That's bad. Like, I never seen Bubba before. Like, why am I looking at Bubba? I was looking at your fat ass. Like, what? So this motherfucker went and grabbed something massive. Whoa. Scary. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Me and my crew, we always had one rule. And we like, we don't go out into people's cities, fucking with them, fucking up shit, being destructive and shit. The point I'm trying to make is when you're out there, it's not fun and fucking games. When you really are a guy like me who tries to have as much fun as I work hard, I try to work hard and play hard. But you gotta do both. Like, you, you can't just play hard and then not do that hard work. Like, how are you gonna stay focused if your main concerns are pussy, blunts, fucking just do the show and then just don't give a fuck. That's, I don't give a fuck. Just do sh like, you gotta worry about getting the fucking money. You gotta worry about is your fucking people okay? You gotta worry about, uh, are we leaving anybody behind? Are, are we fucking like, you know what I'm saying? I've done tours where I arranged the tour, where I booked the entire thing, promoted it. I helped to create content, to sort of market the, the tour as a whole. The more into it you get, the more you meet people and you realize that there's a lot of people who have this whole thing down to a science. There's just so much bullshit that we learned on that one tour that was basically like, oh, you probably need to like get a partner in this and not book this stuff entirely yourself. Uh, if I had to give some rules of the road, I mean, the first thing I would do is make sure they understand what touring is, meaning know where you're going, know the places you're going. Who do you know in those cities? Do I got family there, friends there? To watch my personal back, staffing. There's no need to take people on the road that ain't working. If they're friends, family, boys, whatever they are, if they ain't got a job, leave them home. Because usually those are the ones that get you in trouble. And try not to get too caught up in the fact that this is still work. It's still your job. It's work. It's work. 
groupies are essential in hip hop. They have been ever since the beginning. I mean, groupies has there. I don't think hip hop has existed without groupies. Groupies, you know what I mean? Like, I think that groupies, um, you know, let artists see how hot they is. Because if you ever got no groupies, that means your music ain't hidden. <laughs> there are definitely male groupies, but because I'm around like 15 guys. They can't make it past like the first two to make it to me. <laughs> there was this one guy that used to just Snapchat me multiple times a day, like five, ten times a day. Then one day I was on tour and I hopped out the car. That's when he walked up on me like, I'm your boyfriend and this, then the third. He didn't text my manager. He sent an emails to my booking email. And the fact that I had ran into him in person and it was just like crazy. And, I had to like walk off from him, like, sir, back the fuck up. You were just doing a little too much. And I'm like, whoa, scary. How do you know if a girl like Shane just It took a long, it took a long time. You, I search, I search. This be, you gotta be like, I'm being real. No, you gotta be like real, real. Babe, I'm about to get real, real. You, you gonna get real, real, I'm gonna get real. I'm gonna get real, real. This is how you know. You know uh, when a girl, once you, once you, they understand what you're going through. They understand the fame. Like I tell them every day in great detail. Like, look, I got a radio interview. I'm gonna be gone for this long. I'm, I'm, you're gonna see me on Instagram posts and stuff, but I'm not ignoring you on purpose. And they don't understand, and they turn to an argument because they get mad if you don't text them back. I'm talking about that stuff got old real fast. That stuff got so old so quick. It get annoying. It get annoying. Like, like nobody got time to stress out about multiple females, especially when they trying to stop you from hustling. I, I went through that phase already. Man. I already went wild. I'm 20. I'm done with it. I'm 18, y'all. <laughs> Facts! Facts. We always hear artists like, man, I'm about to go on tour, man. I'm about to go on tour, man. I'm on tour. But you know, I went on quite a few tours, and early on, it was like, you know, one big amusement park. We're young, we out on tours. You know, we first time going to all these cities. We having fun, we chasing girls and having after parties and it was, it was a wonderful thing. And if you don't have bad habits, like drugs or something or shopping or bad habits where you just fuck off the money, I think um, being out on the road 60 days, 90 days is a good way to you know stack money. We recognize, well damn, it's not a lot of money in sales. You have to get out there and get on the road and do those shows, jack that fucking price up and go out and make 100 grand a month. Like once my show prices started going up, like that, I just looked up and I had a crib. It was like, oh, okay. Shows is where they make their money, that tour money. I hear it's like sometimes like, you know, you have some situations where like, like the money's low, like the, the headliner doesn't look out for his openers and like, like a whole bunch of other stuff. So like sometimes people go over their budget and then they have to figure out like how they're gonna get to the next day. Like things like that is like, it's bad. Like it's, it's, it's tough, you know? Actually, one time, actually one time, I brought a girl back to my room and I put all my stuff outside of my fucking pockets and I fucking fell asleep. She left me with a hundred dollars. Happy about that, because at that time I was still only getting two hundred dollars of shows. I mean, you only did like three, so now you know I got six hundred dollars in my pocket. So I'm like, ah, I'm making some money. And I woke up and I had a hundred dollars. I was like, I, I was so embarrassed I couldn't even tell anybody because like they would like made fun of me the whole fucking trip. And I'm the youngest. I'm the rookie on the fucks. So it's like. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that again, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting my shit in my sock, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm fucking with my socks on. <laughs> you know, going on the road and making the mistake of going to a chick's house, a strange chick that I just met because I thought she liked me and I wanted to have sex, and so I'm going to her house, and next thing I know, I'm jumping out of a window to get away from my life because they were setting me up to get robbed. Never do that again, stupid. But once again, I didn't have somebody schooling me on that, so I had to make learn that on my own. Man, being, being on the road is fun. It's some of the best things you'll ever like experience in your life, but you definitely have to be careful if you're a guy like me who likes girls and who likes after-party action. Yeah, you gotta be careful, because you know, you're, you're far from home. You can get set up, like, they can take you anywhere. You like, 
I never seen Bubba before. Like, why am I looking at Bubba? I was looking at your fat ass. Like, what? Like, I don't want to see this guy. Like, shit. And it could happen. So you gotta be careful. You gotta just never leave your crew. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stay on the bus and hopefully, like, you know, she get on the bus and follow the bus. Like, you know, but never just be careful out there. I, I remember um, we had a few tour buses and a guy was like, my girlfriend's on that bus. And then somebody's like, bro, calm down, man. You get out of here with that bullshit. He just was like, man, my girl's on that bus. Like, he was like, that was his girl. You know, nobody outside the bus was hearing that shit. So this motherfucker went and grabbed something, something massive, and threw it and busted a whole fucking window out on the bus and was like, start yelling her name. He was his girl, shit. Shit like that happens. I didn't have motherfuckers outside my room door crying. I know she's in there. And you don't know what that motherfucker do. Kicking the door, crimes of passion, I fucking don't know. Being on the road is, is hard on the person, but it's probably even harder on the people that's home, that's not on the road with you. To keep relationships going, if you got a girl, it's not gonna be easy for you being out there and all this free sex, free drugs, this stuff you never experienced going on. Everybody's usually sitting at home are very insecure because of the stories you hear. And the stories you hear are absolutely 101% accurate. I learned so much on the road. Taurus, everything. Nothing compares to that. It's like you're getting paid to go and quite have fun. I saw the world in a new way. I had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. And Solo Pump uh, stomped on his face. I'm just like, oh shit. That was lit, super, super lit. Music is definitely a way to see the world. We want to go to New Zealand, exactly. Spain, Australia. Australia. We have a song called Australia. Yeah. <laughs> like, we want to experience everything. Exactly. We, just, we want to have a full life. My first time in California, I had the number one record in America. So I came out here, and I'm at La Montrose. So I'm in the private pool, and they got, like, you know, girls serving us drinks and they bring me the phone, and it's like on a platter. It's like some Austin Powers shit. And it's Neil Levine, and Neil Levine says, yo, you see everything that every, everybody's up there for? And I said, yeah, what's, what's going on? He said, I pay for everything. And I said, well, thank you. And he said, you know why? Because NRE is gonna go number one. And I was just like, ah. So to tell you the truth, I'm gonna just be 100% honest with you. I had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> I was like, I, I just, you know, I'm from the hood. I'm just like, this is just free. I'm celebrating it being free. My first tour was overseas. That was super fun. I went to Germany, Iceland. I went everywhere. When we went to Barcelona, they had palm trees. I'm like, this looks like LA. That was lit, super, super lit. I learned so much on the road. Like, I've learned, like, oh, that's ghetto. That's like a real ghetto. Like that's real poverty. Like I learned different things like that. Or I, oh, that's really rich. Like oh my god, that's that that person has a lot of money. And you just seeing that just on tour. Tour is everything. That's absolutely amazing to be able to go to Libya, Africa, South America. Mary J. Blige performed for the king. Millions of dollars, private birthday party for his son, and he wanted to see Mary J. Blige. For me as a young boy from Chicago, being able to tour, to go out and see the world, that was one of the greatest gifts that I've had as a musician. I remember our first trip to Italy, I was just thinking like, man, we are in Italy because I knew so many people who hadn't left the South Side. Who would have ever known when I was doing geography in fourth grade that I would go to this part of the world and be performing. Being able to travel, opened my mind up. So when I went back to Chicago, I saw the world in new ways. The first tour I ever did was with Lil Pump and Smoke Perp, and on the second show of that tour, a fan yelled, like, fuck you, Lil Pump, from the, the audience, and so Lil Pump uh, stomped on his face and uh, proceeded to basically cause what I could only describe as a riot. And I'm just standing there watching this, just like, what is happening? It was really bad, too, because the New York Times was there writing about this, too, which actually, you know, and I, and I said to the guy, I'm like, I'm so sorry. He goes, oh, no, this is great. Like, you know, <laughs> like, obviously, there's no downside to that. 
for him, so that was cool. I'm 17, 18 years old, and I'm on the road DJing for Big Pun. So I'm just like, oh shit. Being on a road is some of the best things you could ever go through. You're a star every night. So like, if you like that spotlight and you like that vibe, then it, it fucking just works for you. So for me, like, I'm on stage and I'm like fucking got like new girls every night. Like, hey, how you doing? Like, that's like the best shit ever. I was making $200 a show. I was spending all my money on sneakers. So I would come home from tour with like 18 pairs of sneakers and no, absolutely no money. Still asking my mom, can I get some money to get a sandwich? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I toured twice this summer, and I'm the opening act, so nobody was there really, but I still got on stage. The first performance, you got to really feel for the stage, and, you know, I had the messed up mic, and, yeah, <laughs> but it was cool. I just made sure my voice was heard, and I just made sure the people that was there, they felt what I was saying. Perform your freestyle for me is like a high that no drug can ever give me. Like, I think it's like the lights and like just me knowing that I'm like touching all these people just by standing on this stage. It's a whole lot of ways to make money in, in like the music game, aside from just making music. There's shows, shows. It's like you're getting paid to go like have fun. So it's like, that's always lit. Every tour is different. Like, I get a feel for the crowd and be like, ah, oh, let's move this song right here. Like, let's turn them up a little early because they look dry out there for the last person, you know? Like, you just got to get the hang of it, but it's, it's super fun. Getting on that stage and performing and seeing those girls in the front row, like, look at you like they want to devour you, nothing compares to that. Like, nothing that you could fathom compares to that because you know that you're getting through to somebody. You know that it's not all just in vain, all the work that you put in. And, and like, you know, there's like parts of my show where I'm like, hands up, like, you know, hands up. And like, when you see all these hands up, you're just like, man, you feel like a sorcerer almost. Like, man, I'm not even in control right now. But when you get on that stage and you perform, it's nothing like it. It's amazing. Like, that's the only way I would want to live my life is on, on the road. The sad part is I can make myself laugh and like, I do this all the time. So it's like, once I start, it just can't stop. Hmm? Can you understand me? Uh. What were you just saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to control over your life. I'm trying to just pin it. Okay. <laughs>